Good morning folks, I've not uh, put Gemma to work. We've come in this morning and the saladette was at five degrees. It should be running at three. So just a little inspection, thinking, oh, what's going on? And uh, yeah, I discovered that the condenser was absolutely bunged up with lint, basically. And uh, the compressor was scalding hot and there was water inside the fridge itself. So I'm assuming we've had an issue and we've formed an ice block. That's what Gemma's just scooped out the bottom of the fridge. There's quite a lot of water there. So go on love, you can get yourself out. So further investigation required. The compressor wasn't turning on, the fan wasn't turning on. I must have just caught it, because like I say, it was still five degrees and everything is still down at temperature. So I'm assuming we've formed an ice block of some sort and that ice block has maintained temp overnight. So we've pulled out the verge and other bits like that and uh, well, we're gonna look into it. So this particular model has always been given us a bit of problem. Um, it could be something to do with this as well because there was no supply, life supply going through to the compressor. Um, so I've slid it out. Fortunately, this kind of um, system is on a sliding tray with big coils of copper pipe, so you're not putting any stress on the coolant lines. And we're going to delve a little bit deeper. In fact, I can see water dripping out of the drain pipe. That's the drainage pipe there. And that must have been blocked or something because there shouldn't be a water buildup inside the fridge. That drainage pipe runs into this uh, outlet pipe from the compressor. This is on the high side. So this is hot gases running through that. And obviously the hot gases running through this pipe evaporate the water that drips into it from the um, evaporator coil inside the fridge, funnily enough. So now we've got this section clear. I want to get in and have a look behind this panel and thankfully Gemma's cleaned the water out so I can put a lamp in there and we can see what's going on but I've just got to take off four screws I think there are five and then we should be able to pull this panel away and we can see the evaporator on the inside and I'll be interested to see if indeed it has iced up so we've got the panel removed and yes, by the looks of it, we've got a, no, that's not ice over there, but there's a lot of liquid dripping off of here. And as you can see, the tray is full. So I'm gonna have a look where that drain plug is. I think it's just there. And we may have to put a jug in on the other side to catch all of that water because it's just gonna gush straight out the other side. And then of course up at the top, we've got our cooling fans. They're a little bit dirty, but this is all kind of not accessible to any members of staff to clean. It's behind that panel, as you can see. I've had to take all of this stuff off. So I'm afraid that's just what cooling fans in fridges tend to look like. So um, yeah, a bit grimy if you ask me, but like I said, there's nothing that the staff can do about it. Unfortunately, they're not built to be accessed. So while I'm in here, I'll give it all a little bit of a freshen up and there's another probe in there, look. So that probe there will be sensing the temperature of the coils for the defrost cycle. Unfortunately, this do doesn't have a defrost element. So I'm not sure how it defrosts, if indeed it does at all. We've been doing it manually. And uh, I think when I found the instruction manual for this machine, it didn't have a defrost cycle. So, yeah, just one of those things. Anyway, let's get a jug under that outlet before this all ends up on the floor. Well, that's a relief. Tidied the wiring up a little bit, sorted things out, and uh, yeah, we've got the fan on. That should have worked anyway, because I replaced that a few months ago. Everything's on, which is perfect. So obviously I've taken the fridge door off, so it's not gonna get down to temp quite yet. And it's saying what, 17C? So I can see that coming down pretty sharpish. So I've stuck a temp probe in the side. As you can see, 
we're dropping rapidly. Maybe not there, but here. Better contact. Get to the top. 7.5, 6.76, 5.3, 4.9, 4 4.3, and there we go. So she works. And then this side should be hot. Should be quite hot. And again, that's working. There's not a lot of air going through this fan though, so I'm going to clean these up a little bit better, I think. So while I'm at it, I've pulled the ice machine out, whipped the top off, brought it down to the unit and uh, we made a few modifications and we're giving it a clean with some caustic. That little drain plug on the front there was at the back of the machine, believe it or not, and it made it very, very difficult to empty um, after a cleaning cycle. Of course, that's a barrier then. It prevents people from actively wanting to clean it. So I've moved it to the front. It was just a quick case of rewriting a pipe. And then also with this little section here on the side, that was the drain valve for draining the, uh, the outlet pipe for draining, because this is a mains supply ice machine. So any overspill just went down that drain. Of course, it came out the back and then it had to do a hairpin bend on the side and it's awful, awful design. So I've just shortened it and uh, cut an hole in the side and stuck it out the side with a flexible pipe direct to a John Guest fitting, which should be easy enough just to hook up to the drainage pipe. I really don't know why the wanky engineers that design things like this don't actually think of how practical it's going to be to clean it. I mean, it's in a food environment. It needs to be clean. Make it easy to clean, for crying out loud. And then people like me have to come along and... We have to improve on what they consider to be a perfect design. Anyway, I'm going to let this run its cycle, get it back to the pub. We open in 10 minutes. I'm going to have to move a bit quick sharp, aren't I, I think? We'll be fine now. We've got some bagged ice to fall back on. And the ice machine has gone. Finished. But there are more projects to complete. This is one of them. We've got nine of these power supply units here. Um, this is an ice crushing machine which for some reason they've incorporated a mild steel bolt which rusts and makes all the ice crusher yeah, a bit funny. So that's going to need cleaning up and putting back together. And we'll buy one with a stainless steel bolt. And then I'm going to tell you this, just before we wrap up the vlog and go home, the heat pads have arrived. So these are all going to be part of a new um, interesting vlog, maybe tomorrow, maybe the day after. So can we put these bad boys onto the tanks to heat the tanks up without setting the place on fire? So we've got a 380 watt 550 by 530 mil silicon heat pad we've got a 400 watt uh, this one's slightly smaller 480 by 280 heat pad both of them with adhesive backing and we've also got a 500 watt heat bar so two terminals here power in clamp to the side of your tank and heat her up then also some indicator lamps all to be featured in another vlog thanks boys we'll see you on the next one